So I pulled over along the Seward Highway here because I saw some dull sheep there. I want to see if I could get some good shots. So with a tripod in hand, I walked over a little ways to get a little bit better of an angle and set things up. So for this, because I'm on a tripod, I'm going to go in manual. I'm shooting a 100 to 400, probably at 400, so I want at least a thousandth of a second. And with auto ISO, I'm going to go at 5.6 because I don't need any depth to the field. So these guys aren't super duper high and the angle's not too bad, but I got a lot of shots like this. So I'm going to climb up and just see how high I can get. It's a lot of work, but it's a beautiful day. Let's see what might shake out up there. Pretty steep all the way up there. But we'll manage nice and slow. Go slow. Some pretty tight spots here. And I'm climbing hand over hand as I <clears throat> make my way up this. It's pretty steep and jumbly, but not bad. And once we get up here, how magnificent is that? We'll see what happens as we go around the corner here and see if the sheep are still there. It took me quite a while to hike up. This is the safest part of the whole trip right here, but we'll see what goes on. Beautiful, beautiful spot up here. And we're not all that far from the truck. So here we are above the Seward Highway. Hiked up here to get close to those sheep, which you can see behind me. And just kind of hanging out, waiting for them to do something or not. It's just such a beautiful day up here in the springtime. You can see a couple sheep, three sheep on the far side there. See if we can get the photos of them. We've got the 100 to 400. And I'm shooting it at a thousandth of a second. Light open at 5.6, manual exposure, auto ISO, and underexposing at a third of a stop. And that's what we're getting. We just have to be patient and wait for them to do something. So I'm going to shoot with a 100 millimeter lens here so I can see the highway and just see how. Even though I climbed up here a ways, I still don't feel like I'm high enough. But let's see what else we're going to get. Oh, there's one right above us. That's a cool angle looking right down at us. So I decided that these photos I was getting of the sheep just wasn't working out. There's just too much blue sky, not enough background. So I decided to hike up a little bit further. Didn't go much, maybe 40 feet or something like that, but it was high enough to make all the difference in the world. Now that I'm up here almost even with them, I feel I get a much better background with that ice and some mountains in the background. So now I'm gonna work this and I'm gonna stick around here for as long as it takes to get a sheep to be put just in the right perspective. Hopefully this will be a calendar shot. Let's take a look. So I'm shooting a whole lot of different frames here. I'm zooming in like a 100 millimeter, 85 millimeter is about the perfect shot for me, but I needed some depth of field. I wanted more to be sharp and I'm shooting at F8, so that doesn't give me a lot of depth of field. So I oftentimes zoomed out and shooting like at a 35 or a 50 millimeter at F8, giving me more depth of field, figuring I would just crop in later for my calendar shot. That's pretty much what I did. But I'm also trying to capture the decisive moment when the sheep is looking just right. And that was the decisive moment I was waiting for. So this is where I'm at in relation to them. Up high on a cliff. Now for the getting down part. You can see the truck down there on the highway. This is the way I came up. So as I go down this, I'm just sliding on my bottom because it's a pretty steep gully. 
as they say, don't try this at home. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is the chute that I came up and it was a little tough because it's so steep. Now I'll just be inching my way down the chute. And then that's the trail more or less that I took over to the other side. So that was a great couple of hours spent with the sheep. And I got a number of different angles as I hiked up in different spots to photograph them. But ultimately when I got up on top and I was able to be at the same level as them and get the ice in the background, that's ultimately what I was after, which is something different than what I've done in the past. Now I'm going to take you into my office and show you how I cull the photos, or as I call it, edit the photos, and then also how I process the photos in Lightroom. So now's a good time to click out of this if you don't want to watch the backstory on processing images, but thanks so much for watching how I photograph the doll sheep. So I use this program called Breeze Browser in order to do my initial edit, the initial culling of photos. I find it much, much faster than Lightroom, plus I don't want to import everything into Lightroom. Pictures of my feet, out of focus pictures, whatever. So I go through and I call photos here first. And I contend that if the photo looks good small, it's going to look good even better, big. So I go through these fairly fast. When I come across something that I think I like, like this, I'll double click and I'll go, oh, I like that. I'll escape out of it. And then I'll click four photos. And that quick, I can get four photos on the screen quickly to see which one is the decisive moment. All of these photos look exactly identical. So then it's a matter of finding which one is the sharpest. And then I'll go through and I'll select and number the ones that I feel are the sharpest. <clears throat> then I'll just keep going through like this, selecting four photos at a time. And again, this is much faster than it would be on Lightroom. Then I'll just right mouse click the ones I like and do a number two on those. I'll go into Breeze Browser and go View, Image Order, Sort by Ranking. And then all the number twos are at the top. Then what I do is I move all of those number twos to a best folder here. So I just select all the number twos, put them in the best folder, everything is there. So then these are the only ones that I'll import into Lightroom to process from there. So this is one of several photos that I like of the sheep that I'm hoping to use for my calendar for 2022 in the springtime, maybe March or April. But in any case, the reason I chose this was not for this composition like I shot it, but because I shot this at a 56 millimeter at f9, it gives a lot of depth of field between the sheep and the infinity background. So for that reason, I chose this one because I plan to crop it substantially to get rid of this railroad track and all that stuff. So first off, if I go to the develop module and I go to the crop, what I want is I want to get rid of the railroad track, but I like this tree down here, but I don't know if I like it enough to have it in the frame. Maybe it takes too much away from it. So I look first what I do is I look at the photo like this and I go, hmm, that's not bad. Then maybe I'll do a <clears throat> create virtual copy. So I have a copy just like that crop. Then I'll go to crop again, and this time I'm going to go substantially more. And because I shot this at an ISO 160, and this is a sharp Canon lens, there's no problem with me cropping it this much and enlarging it to a 9x12 300 dpi for my calendar. So then I've got this. So I think this is much better. So now the question at hand is how to process it. Now, all this looks fine where the sheep are at and the rocks. That looks good. The histogram looks good. But boy, I sure wish this was a lot darker because my eye 
wants to go to this bright spot and I don't want it to do that. So there's a number of options that I could use here to darken that. I don't know which option is going to be best, so I'm going to play with a few of them. So per first we'll take the magic brush. I'll make the exposure maybe two stops less just so I really get to a feel for it. And I'll come up here and just start painting that down. And I'm just going to start with the sky at first. And just get the sky along with those mountains to look as good as I can. Or rather, just to paint them in. So then I can just use that particular layer all by itself and adjust that one. So all I'm doing is choosing those just like that. And I'm going to go down a little bit here to get into that bluff area there. So that's part of it. So now I have that. And now I can adjust just that layer as I wish. A little lighter, quite a bit darker. So I like the quite a bit darker, but we'll just play with that. Okay. Then I'll choose that again, or use another brush, and I'm going to paint just this. I'm going to do this fairly quickly so that this goes by a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to, because that ice is all white, I want to just paint that. I'm not going to paint the gray stuff because that's already darker. So I'm just going to paint this area a bunch, get underneath that bluff area so I'm not doubling up on it. Just make sure I've got it all covered equally. So there's that. Now, I would say that that looks a little too dark considering that it's supposed to be white. But at least I can see it. So now I'm going to bring that part up just a wee bit. And that looks better. So there's the difference between the before, pretty bright on the left, and the after, much better and darker on the left. So now I feel I have a much better image for my calendar, just like that. And it's just dodging and burning, same thing that Ansel Adams used to do or what I used to do in the darkroom. So now going back, what else could I do in order to make this darker? Because remember, a person's eye goes to the brightest part, and this is so bright that it takes away from the sheep. So I want it darker. So besides using the magic brush, I could also use the graduated filter. So one thing I could do is I could go like this, and I can... bring that down in like that. This is like kind of a poor man's way to do it. Now that's overdone. So I could soften it by doing that. But it's not nearly as good as doing it the other way. So that's a quick and simple way to make it work. But it just doesn't just doesn't cut it. So it's not even worth. I mean, it helps a little bit. If something simple and quick, I could just use that. And then if we crop this down even more, that's not bad for a quick and simple two second version of it. Helps. Looks a little odd right in here, but that's what it is. Odd. I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of photographing doll sheep at Windy Corner above Turnigan Arm in the springtime. Hope to see you here in Alaska sometime soon. Bye-bye.